All right, we're going to finish chapter one today by discussing topics in chapter 1.10. Uh, this is one of the kind of like a confusing topic that sometimes students struggle with. It's the mole concept. And what we're going to show is that the mole is simply a counting number, and it's used a lot of times when we do mass relationship calculations for lab preparation and a variety of other uh, topics that we cover in, in chemistry. And in the last lecture, we introduced the atomic mass unit. And we're gonna, we're, we're gonna show how the mole and the atomic mass unit are related. And we're gonna show how they make our, it makes our life a little bit easier using the periodic table with this uh, idea. So the, ma the atomic mass unit is referred to as the AMU. It's a convenient unit of measurement. It uses a reference point of the carbon-12 isotope, and it's based on the mass of 1 12th the mass of atoms in, in carbon-12. One atomic mass unit has a, a defined mass of 1.661 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. Pretty small unit. As we said, it's convenient for comparing atoms of different elements. However, it's not practical. If we walk into a laboratory and we want to weigh something, we don't weigh atomic mass units. Normally, we weigh grams. We might weigh milligrams. We may, may weigh kilograms. In the real world, it's really hard to measure small particles. Let's think about an example. What if we were able to isolate a single molecule of water. What if I was able to isolate one molecule of water? One small molecule of water has a mass of about three times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Now, in the real world, we don't have any kind of balance or scale, as we sometimes refer to them, to measure such a small mass. What we say is that that balance is not sensitive enough to measure such small masses. So we need, we need to do something different. We need a solution to this problem. One solution to this problem is to weigh large numbers of particles. And these numbers of particles, th these are going to include atoms or molecules. We need to just count, we need to measure a lot of them. Now, we, in, in most of our normal experiences, there are a lot of molecules or atoms or particles in these small things that we're measuring. For instance, what we can measure in the real world is we can measure a teaspoon of water. One teaspoon of water is something we can visualize and we can weigh in the laboratory. One teaspoon of water has a mass of about five grams. We, we can weigh that in the laboratory. Our balances that we have in our laboratory are able to weigh that. And if we were able to analyze the number of particles, the number of water molecules, what we're going to find out are there are about 2 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules in this teaspoon. So what the take-home message is, we can't measure small single atoms or molecules. We need a large number of them to measure something in the real world. And notice these are on, on, on a scale of 10 to the 23rd. That's a pretty big number. And so what we do in science is we use a counting number to represent a certain number of particles that we can weigh out in, in, in real world applications. So let's think about some, let's think about what a counting number is. You might say, I don't know what you mean by a counting number counting numbers.
counting numbers are something that's really not that unfamiliar. We should be familiar with. We're not unfamiliar with it. For instance, a dozen. When you go to the store, you might buy a dozen eggs, and you should know that a dozen has is 12 items. Another counting number that we're probably familiar with is a pair. When we go and buy shoes, we buy a pair of shoes, two shoes. Uh, in science, we measure and use a counting number known as the mole. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items. Notice it's roughly around the same number of particles that we can, of water that we can measure. So this is a unit of measurement that we use in the international system of measurement to represent the number of particles that we're, we're, we're considering. Now in science, we're usually gonna look at a mole of atoms or molecules, but we can have a mole of anything. And we're actually gonna go through a little exercise to help address and visualize a mole of, of, of a, something that we might be uh, familiar with. So let's, let's define a little bit more about the mole. So the mole, let's, let's spend some time discussing it and how we have a reference for how we define it. We need, we need to refer to something to define a mole and we are gonna introduce that. So let's think about what a mole is. So as we said, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items. And in science, these can be atoms or molecules and so forth. But we can have a mole of other things. We can have a mole of baseballs. We can have a mole of pennies. And in a second, I'm going to give you a visual exercise to think about what a mole of donuts would look like. It's an SI standard unit of, of, of number of items. So it's the SI base unit of number of particles or number of items that we're, we're dealing with. And how it's defined is important. We need to have a reference. Where did we get this number from? It's just not something we arbitrarily said, let's just use th this number. There is a, there is, there is a, a reference point for it. And it's defined just like the atomic mass unit. And that's gonna be really important. Like the atomic mass unit, a mole, is the number of carbon-12 atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. So that's important. And we're going to show how that relationship, the mole, is related to the atomic mass unit, the number that we use on the periodic table. Very important. And it's referred to and given on exams as Avogadro's number. You don't need to memorize it. And it's an honor of the Italian scientist Avogadro. He studied particles and tried, was trying to determine the number of particles in, uh, in a certain sample of a substance. And it, it's given on exams. Let's think of a mole. Again, it's a, it's a large number. It's a large number of items. Like I said, we can have a mole of atoms. We can have a mole of molecules. We can have a mole of donuts. So if we had one mole of donuts, 
and that would be equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. Now, this I was given this data, I'm going to believe it. It would cover the Earth. So here's our planet Earth. Here's planet Earth. Here's United States. It's supposed to be like there. And up there's Canada and there's South America. It would cover the Earth. This is the Earth. So just in case you were wondering what that image was. It would cover the Earth of, with a layer eight kilometers thick. That's about five miles thick. So these donuts would cover the Earth. Five miles thick. Now, you can look up other relationships between what a mole is. I found another one. It's kind of cool. If you were given a mole of pennies the day you were born and you spent a million dollars every second of your life until the time you died at the age of 100, you would still have 99% of the money you started out with. That's, a, that's, that's, that's an outrageously large number. That's how big this number is. And that's, that's, a, that's important to visualize it. But what's really important about the mole is how it's defined. It's defined just like we defined the atomic mass unit. So let's look at this relationship right here and understand how this is comparable to the atomic mass unit and why this is really important in terms of mass relationships. We're using the carbon-12 isotope to define the atomic mass unit. And we're also using the same relationship for defining the number of particles in a mole. So what's important, the take home message? Well, let's look at carbon-12 again, or just carbon. This is from, uh, we've, we've been talking about this a lot, carbon. And let's just look at this. This is from the periodic table, you probably reckon. Notice when they have this number written here, you ever wondered, they don't have any units written with And Dr. Patton said, we always have to have units written with our data. That's because this number here, it represents the units of data depending upon the data that we're looking at. Let's think about what's important. One atom of carbon. If we had a single atom of carbon, it has a mass in atomic mass units And due to the fact that the number of moles are related to carbon-12 isotope, the same way we define the atomic mass unit, this is the take-home message. If we have one mole of carbon atoms, the number is exactly the same, except its unit is in grams. And that's very important. And this is true for any element from the periodic table. This number that's listed on, on the periodic table, whether it be carbon or we're gonna discuss potassium. Let's look at potassium. And potassium has 19. And some people have different periodic tables. So some people have periodic tables that are limited to four digits. So sometimes you'll see this. And it's just because some periodic tables round them. And on my, on my PowerPoint slide, I'm using the more, more significant figure just because I found it on a different periodic table. But notice they're just rounding. That, that's the only thing. Don't have a heart attack. We have the same relationship. One atom of potassium has a mass of 39.10 atomic mass units. If we had one mole of potassium, it has a mass of 39.1 grams. 
So this is a very important relationship. This, this, this number that's used on the periodic table, it's, it is the average atomic mass of, uh, of an atom in atomic mass units. And it's also the molar mass for one mole of that particular substance. So a lot of times we do use the term molar mass. Molar mass, it equals the mass, and that's in grams, of one mole of a substance. And usually we write molar mass in terms of grams per mole. For potassium, it has a molar mass 39.10 gram per mole. If we look on the periodic table and use a different element, sulfur. Sulfur is 32.07 grams per mole. Notice this is a actual a conversion factor. And we're gonna use this relationship between the molar mass the mole and, and, and mass for a lot of different relationships that we're gonna be dealing with in our next video, which goes through a variety of applications of the mole concept.